AIG, is an international insurance company headquartered in New York City, United States of America. The company was founded in 1919. The company employs 97,000 workers. The American International Group is the fourth largest company in Forbes Global 2000. The company operates through three core businesses namely General Insurance, LifeAmp, Pensions, and subsidiaries that support independent technology. AIG was founded December 19, 1919 when American Cornelius Van der Star in 1892 established a general insurance agency, American Asiatic Underwriters in Shanghai, China. Business grew rapidly, and two years later, Star formed a life insurance operation. Now, American International Group, AIG, is a global insurance company with operations in more than 80 countries and jurisdictions. AIG provides a range of insurance products to support their clients in business and in life, including, general property or casualty, life insurance, and retirement and financial services through our general insurance, life and retirement and investments business units. The management motivation is AIG want to cover loss in revenue by selling fake insurance and avoid a decline in shares on the New York Stock Exchange, due to a decline in revenue. There are three components which contributed to the occurrence of AIG's fraud. The components can be explained using the three points consisting in the fraud triangle Firstly, the pressure faced by AIG is the existence of profitability or expected trend level by investment analysts, institutional investors, significant creditors or other external parties and there is a significant share of compensation that is contingent on achievement of aggressive target for stock price operating results, financial position, or cash flow. Second, the rationalization that occurs is the company's thinking that there is no other solution to solve the problems, we are doing it for good, which is to save the company. Third, the opportunity for American International Group, AIG, to commit fraud is that there is no control, the control that occurs is not effective, even the management's ability to override control. Then, the lack of attention from the general insurance department that examines the financial statements of the American International Group. In 2005, AIG was caught for alleged fraud by the SEC, Justice Department, and New York State Attorney General's Office. Independent counsel conducted investigations at the request of AIG's audit committee. As the SEC found the errors to be grave, the SEC began investigating the matter jointly. It was found that there existed fictional transactions in the accounts of AIG. GRC assisted AIG in late 2000 and early 2001 in the form of sham transfers for loss reserves. The General Reinsurance Corporation structured two sham transactions to help boost AIG's loss reserves. The genre agreed to pay a $500 million premium and shift $500 worth of claims with little or no risk to AIG, $250 each in 2000 and 2001. Since there is no actual risk transferred, the transaction is not an insurance deal according to Insurance Accounting 101, which means the $500 million should not be categorized as income on its income statement. However, AIG accounted for the transaction as a regular reinsurance deal and recorded $500 million in their premium revenue, making up for the loss reserves to pay claims. As a result, the balance sheet showed a false increase in loss reserves while the income statement showed a wrong increase in income for the quarter in 2000 and first 2001. AIG lied to investors and the government by cooking their books which is not for the first time. Then AIG arranged a transaction with CAPCO Reinsurance Company to bury nearly $200 million of underwriting losses. The investigation also uncovered a fraudulent bid rigging scheme. AIG has been operating for years, but the SEC investigation prompted an internal audit by AIG and led to resentment of prior accounting for the previous four years, wiping out $3.9 billion of earnings. The SEC alleged that from 2000 to 2005, AIG falsified its financial statements through various sham transactions to give analysts a rosy picture of AIG's financial results. During the period of fraud, AIG sold its shares in a stock for stock corporate acquisition. Next, is the CPA firm involved? Price Waterhouse Coopers LLP is the CPA firm in charge of providing an independent opinion on AIG's insurance company's financial status. 
PwC recklessly certifies the accuracy and completeness of AIG's financial statements which do not comply with GAAP and include billions of dollars in revenue derived from illegal contingent commissions and hundreds of millions of improper reinsurance income. Not only that, we can't disguise the reality that AIG is one of PwC's largest and most profitable customers behind all of this. According to the AIG proxy statement submitted annually with the SEC, from 2000 to 2003, AIG paid PwC millions of dollars for audits and audit-related services, ranging from $14.9 million to $39.5 million. PwC's receipt of audit and non-audit fees also jeopardizes its independence and objectivity in the audits of AIG's financial statements for the years 1999, 2000, 2001, 2002, and 2003. By having a professional and beneficial relationship with AIG, PwC has violated GAAS and the requirement to preserve independence in this regard. Because PwC partner income is connected to client costs, it is apparent that they have a direct financial incentive to keep AIG as a PwC client and hence keep the tens of millions of dollars in annual fees coming in. PwC's professional stature is also bolstered by its long-term and ongoing connection with AIG. Through interactions with AIG employees and management, as well as the analysis of AIG's non-public documents, PwC has constant access to and understanding of AIG's internal and sensitive financial and business information. PwC personnel could also observe and assess AIG's business and accounting procedures, as well as examine AIG's internal and public financial statements, company's internal control system and structure. The auditors which are involved in the case are still unknown until today. The names of the auditors are not disclosed to the public or had been redacted in several documents posted to sites regarding the fraud committed by AIG because PwC, the CPA firm in charge, has asked the Commission to obscure them. The failure of the auditors from PwC to detect fraud was partly due to negligence and the lack of internal control from AIG. This made the auditors from PwC failed in obtaining sufficient competent evidence to provide a reasonable basis for issuing an unqualified opinion that AIG's financial statements for the year and 1999 to 2003, which states that AIG's financial statements prepared by AIG's management are adequately presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles in all material respects. As AIG's purportedly independent auditor, PwC's auditors have an obligation to audit AIG's financial statements in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards. However, in this case, the auditor from PwC clearly violated GAAS by giving an unqualified opinion as there were clearly many material misstatements found in AIG's financial statements. The auditor in charge from PwC shall have stated that he or she either could not provide an opinion on the financial statements or shall have provided an adverse opinion which states that the financial statements are not presented fairly in all material respects in accordance with GAP. Then, Howard I. Smith, who is the CFO of the AIG company, used to work at PwC but was not independent so that there was already involvement from PwC related to accounting fraud in the company. Smith was also found to have prepared, participated in the issuance of, signed and certified the accuracy of any false and misleading company press releases and SEC filings. Also, Smith acknowledges that he has participated in and approved transactions that inaccurately reflect AIG's financial results over four years. However, he did not recognize this as a fraud, but a role in the transaction. Next, the negligence committed by the auditor is gross negligence, in which the negligence is as follows. 1. PwC has a long-term relationship with AIG. Due to the long-term relationship, 
PwC accepts both audit and non-audit fees received by PwC are large enough to interfere with its independence and objectivity with respect to auditing AIG's financial statements. In addition, PwC personnel have constant access to AIG's confidential and internal financial and business information. 2. PwC failed to plan AIG's audit which in the audit plan does not reflect the negative factors that affect AIG's control environment. 3. PwC does not provide a red flag regarding AIG's control procedures for recording transactions. In particular, insurance or reinsurance risk is limited, weak, and should provide a banner to PNC transactions and bright point PwC should be able to take these controls into account in planning and conducting AIG audits. 4. PwC failed to exercise the necessary professional skepticism. In the assessment of AIG's financial statements which should have evaluated PwC with the appropriate risk of material misstatement in AIG's financial records. 5. PwC recklessly ignores that AIG made large payments for unspecified services, hundreds of millions of dollars in contingent commissions to Marsh and other insurance brokers, and from AIG's series of unauthorized or improperly recorded transactions. 6. PwC fails to identify or knowingly ignores audit risk. Because. First AIG has had the same chairman and CEO for 37 years. Second AIG management violated gap in accounting for sales of limited reinsurance to bright point and off-balance sheet transactions with PNC. 7. PwC did not obtain sufficient competent evidence to provide an opinion on the financial statements that have been presented. Due to PwC knowing or recklessly ignoring AIG's internal control deficiencies, PwC did not obtain competent evidence. In our view, PwC failed to detect irregularities in part of PwC intentionally or due to carelessness and negligence in acting and not complying with professional and ethical standards in auditing. In 2004, the SEC announces that it is investigating against the misdeeds of AIG in relation to its transactions with PNC Financial Services Group Inc., which it suspected of being a false transaction. The Office of Attorney General along with the Justice Department sued AIG among various companies for bid rigging. AIG agreed to the charges and pleaded to pay $126 million as a settlement charge against the charges of bid rigging. In 2005, Greenberg resigns as the CEO of AIG. In investigations, it was found that NBSP, AIG has misreported its transactions up to the limit of $500 million. The CFO of the company, Howard was removed from his position as well. AIG declared that it will restate the financial statements of the previous five years it reduced its year-end equity for 2004. And two former officers of Genry, General Reinsurance Company, plead guilty in the criminal cases in matters related to AIG loss portfolio deal. In 2006, the charges against the present and former employees were taken back on the condition that all the benefits illegally taken by them shall be paid back to the people. In 2008, published the disclosure of financial losses and subsequent to a falling stock price. AIG suffered from a liquidity crisis when its credit ratings were downgraded below AA levels the Federal Reserve stepped in to save AIG from bankruptcy by pledging $85 billion to enable the company to meet increased collateral obligations after the credit rating downgrade. The Fed hired Edward Liddy as CEO and chairman his job was to break up AIG and sell off the pieces to repay the loan. The Fed restructured its aid package. It reduced its $85 billion loan to $60 billion. At the same time, the Treasury Department purchased $40 billion in AIG preferred shares using funds from the Troubled Asset Relief Program. The funds allowed AIG to retire its credit default swaps rationally, stave off bankruptcy, and protect the government's original investment. 
AIG's attempts to manipulate shareholders about the company's financial health by hiding their losses led to their own downfall. If we try to see the actual consequences, it affects the entire United States economy. A company as big as AIG affects the nation's economic growth and institutional failure, at this level of course undermines the nation's growth on many levels. AIG executives put their own interests first so that the rights and harm caused to shareholders do not interfere with them. Had AIG's management worked under any ethical framework, based on what is right, respecting the principles of honesty, fairness and respect, this would not have happened. One, why did the government allow AIG to conduct an IPO? Two, why can AIG not recognize incurred losses, whereas based on PASOC 71, incurred losses must be recognized? AIG is able to conduct an IPO because it has fulfilled the requirements to become a public company, namely it has a clear structure, has assets, and the company already has a profit. AIG does not acknowledge any incurred losses because AIG wants its financial reports to be always profitable. If AIG followed the applicable accounting standards, fraud would not have occurred. However, after an investigation by the SEC in 2008 AIG redisclosed incurred losses that had previously been manipulated, which was followed by a decline in share prices, 